Hey guys, what's going on? So today we are going to be talking about complex manifolds. This is, uh, we want to talk about these a little bit just before we get into loop quantum gravity. Again, if you like this kind of content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure to go onto my Patreon page if you want to support the channel. And if you want to become a member, please become a member of this channel as well. Without further ado, let's get straight into the topic. So today we're talking about complex manifolds, and this is going to be the topic of our discussion for maybe the next two to three, it, <clears throat> two to three, maybe four videos, just to make sure that we really understand what we're talking about, so that we can revisit this concept of holonomy, because holonomy really only makes sense when we take in to consideration complex manifolds, because we want to bring SU two transformations into this picture, okay. SU2 transformations, those are the unitary transformations, those are the things responsible for rotating um, spinners on some complex manifold. In the last video we talked about how the connection constituted the holonomy of a patch, and um, in, tradi in traditional general relativity we see transformations in space time that render a metric unchanged. Okay, These transformations can be regarded in this way here, as I've listed where we have um, G alpha beta, this is the metric located at every point in space time, so it's a field, right? So we, without being, uh, going back too far into GR, where we're, G alpha beta, I will decrease the thickness of my pen here, G alpha beta is a function of our space time. It's also got a basis, a tensor product basis. Again, this is material from our last, uh, not our last video, but one of my playlists on GR, if you want to look more into that. Uh, we can transform the connection as well. And what we aim for is a transformation of the connection that obeys the following rule. And you might think, okay, this is a little bit arbitrary, but we'll see. We're going to come back to this. I'm sort of giving you the punchline first. And um, then we're going to go through a bunch of uh, topics on complex manifolds, and then we'll revisit this. But uh, we want to, the, the, the reason I'm sort of giving this, giving this to you right now is because I personally learn um, from understanding the punchline first so that I know what all of the rest of the baggage between now and this point is going to aim towards, right? Um, so we're going to put a pin in this for right now, and we're going to start talking about uh, loop quantum, or not loop quantum gravity, we're going to start talking about a little bit of the background of loop quantum gravity, which is, um, or the stage, if you will, which is a complex manifold. Before we get to this point, though, I just want to hit home the uh, the um, punch on here one more time. The transformation rule might seem arbitrary at first, but we are going to uh, see how it comes about by considering the transformation of a spinner. And this is one of the first leaps that we make in loop quantum gravity. We're saying that parallel spinners on a manifold are somehow analogous to the holonomy of the manifold, or holonomy of the manifold. However, you say this word, what is the holon holonomy? Well, it is related to transition functions on a manifold. It is related to um, the topological features of a manifold. And so we really start think, we really need to start thinking about topological features. We really need to start thinking about how manifolds become complex again, because spinners are complex values. And so this is going to be the content of our discussion for the next three to four videos. So to get a deeper understanding of holonomy, let's start off by investigating complex geometry. At the core of a coordinate transformation is the overlap of two atlases on a manifold. Now, I really like this analogy of of how to understand atlases, which is when I was young, uh, me and my dad would go fishing a bunch, okay? And when I was young, we didn't have phones, okay? So 
what we had to do, <laughs> the old-fashioned way, was to take out our atlas, or our, our map, okay, and it was a book. It was a book, so page one would be a section of um, Oregon, or I was, I grew up in Oregon. They say we wanted to get from Southern Oregon to somewhere in, um, uh, somewhere near Crater Lake, if we were fishing there for some reason. And so we needed to take the map out. We needed to then open the book and we had to figure out where we were on the map. And then we can figure out, okay, we're here. We need to get here. And so let's, let's follow the map. And as we're following the map and we're turning the pages, we have to under, we have to realize that the, a portion of the map, a portion of the maps, the corners of the maps, uh, matched um, the coordinates on the next page of the book. Okay, what do I mean by this? I mean, suppose you're okay. You're tracking yourself on this paper map. Okay, and at the very edge of the page, there's a little town listed called I don't Glendale or whatever. Okay, and then you have to turn the page. You see, oh, Glendale's at the bottom of this page. Okay, so there's an overlap between these two maps. And the overlap between these two maps is um, the overlap of these two regions on a manifold. Okay, now the reason I really like this analogy is because the name of the game here is the overlap. It's not, it's not the page themselves, it's the overlap. The overlap is going to tell us something about how to get from one uh, set to the next set or from one page to the next page. Because if there's no overlap, you don't necessarily know if page two comes after page one on the, on the map. So the overlap is the name of the game. The overlap is the connection between the two atlases. And, and we can already start thinking here, okay, the connection, connection coefficients in GR, we're going to get, we're going to get there, but the, the, this is the point, so. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're interested in this video and want to learn more about loop quantum gravity, string theory, and so forth, what you can do is you can become a member of this channel and you can gain access to all the videos that become uploaded on this topic and future topics as well. Again, Thank you so much for your support, and thank you so much for watching. This channel keeps on growing and growing, and I'm very excited to see where this is going to go in the future. So with that being said, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you like this kind of content. Make sure to become a member as well. Thank you, and bye.